I know that just a couple of days ago, you and some colleagues co-authored a piece in Becky Sisa titled An Inconvenient Truth, the real reason why Africa is not getting vaccinated. And in it, it's a great piece. For those of you who haven't read it, I recommend it very highly. You explore and debunk the African vaccine hesitancy myths that are being peddled by Pfizer's very problematic CEO and others. Can you break down the real reasons why Africa is not getting vaccinated and tell us how greed manifests in the story? What impact has this greed had on Africa as it relates to vaccine apartheid? Thanks, and just real honor to be on this panel with Pifa and Kamran and, and Peter Singer. Um, so yeah, just, just really grateful to also be given the first uh, opening shot. And so I think the answer is simple, Maza. Uh, it's racism, right? It's because black lives don't matter as much as people in the global north. And I think that's the reason why the global south, which is made up of many black and brown people, uh, have taken so long to be vaccinated. So, I mean, it manifested in the, in the first way already in late 2020, when richer countries basically bought up most of the supplies. Kamran and I have actually written about this with Gavin Yami in the British Medical Journal as well. Uh, we've actually called it a crime against humanity. We said it's a moral state. So a few things happened. The first is that the contracts were signed, what we call bilaterals, by late 2020 already, all of the existing supplies and available capacity was basically bought up and taken up while we were told in the global south to rely on COVAX. And we can deal with COVAX later in terms of its own shortcomings and the lack of uh, volume that it has available for it um, by the end of 2021. So there's been a significant delay in one, in the signing of contracts for Africa in particular, in the availability of supplies, in the granting of licenses to multiple manufacturers. And then there's been significant delays and shortcomings uh, within COVAX, which was the initiative that Africa was told to rely and depend on. And you know, we had called out COVAX from last year already. We said, this is not going to work because it's still premised on the voluntary cooperation of pharmaceutical companies. And you're never going to get enough supplies for the whole world at the same time for a handful of vaccines if you only rely on a handful of manufacturers. And so it goes to the heart of manufacturing capacity, which is you know, linked to the TRIPS waiver, and, and we can all talk about that later. And so the net result is that countries were either too, too you know, last in line to basically sign their, their own bilaterals, which South Africa did because you couldn't rely on COVAX, or you're basically waiting for a drip feed of supplies from COVAX or a drip feed of supplies from what's called donations and pledges. And we know that the pledges haven't fully materialized, only 17% of what has been pledged has actually arrived for countries in Africa. So the real reason why Africa hasn't been vaccinated at even 15, 20, 25, 30, 40%, like many other countries around the world, is because simply we haven't had enough supplies. And we didn't have enough supplies when it mattered the most. When the world started vaccinating and when there was this uh, momentum around getting people vaccinated before the anti-vax movement and the hesitancy started building up, we didn't have enough supplies. Our program in South Africa would have been much different if we had supplies from February already. The African Union's um, basically vaccine program for the entire continent would have been different if we had supplies in March already when the contract, for example, with Johnson & Johnson was already signed. So I think timing is an issue. And so it's very easy for people to say Africans can't tell time. That's what they said in the HIV AIDS crisis, right? But now they're saying Africans don't want the vaccine. Africans are anti-science. Africans are, are, are anti-vax, when in fact we know the genesis of where that anti-vax movement uh, you know, is actually emerging from. And so it's a really what we call a racist trope. I mean, Tia and myself, um, Tom Mulder and Greg Gonzalez have written about this. We said that, that this is basically racism. It's disguised racism, where you use vaccine hesitancy and the anti-vax movement as an excuse for why it's October 2021 and we still don't have enough supplies in Africa. And we can talk later about why we don't have supplies in Africa, aside from the hoarding and the vaccine nationalism which is fundamentally, I think, linked to two reasons. So the lack of leadership on the part of most African leaders that has actually forced us into this point, the unwillingness to take on pharmaceutical power, but mostly the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. And you know, I'm hoping we'll get a chance to unpack that. Thanks.